I love getting through chambers. It's like, gosh, you just one more day, a little further along, and it's amazing to me how each day gets closer and closer to the goal of completing my utmost. <laughs> Who knows what it is that God will bring us to through the days as we examine his word and as we apply it to our lives and as we begin to experience daily what he would choose to do in us as we share his word in devotions and choosing to be reading devotions and learning thereby. In utmost, the point of spiritual honor I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Romans 1.14 Paul was overwhelmed with the sense of his indebtedness to Jesus Christ, and he spent himself to express it. The great inspiration in Paul's life was his view of Jesus as his spiritual creditor. Do I feel that sense of indebtedness to Jesus in regards to every unsaved soul? I don't think so. The spiritual honor of my life as a saint is to fulfill my debt to Jesus in relationship to them, not to him. Every bit of my life that is of a value I owe to the redemption of Jesus Christ. Am I doing anything to enable him to bring his redemption into actual manifestation in other people's lives? I can only do it as the Spirit of God works in me and creates this sense of indebtedness, this sense of owing. I am not to be a superior person amongst men, but a bond slave of the Lord Jesus. You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Paul sold himself to Jesus Christ. He says, I am a debtor to everyone on the face of the earth because of the gospel of Jesus. I am free to be an absolute slave only. I have no freedom of rights, my own will to be done. That is the characteristic of the life when once this point of spiritual honor is realized. Quit praying about yourself and be spent for others as the bond slaves of Jesus. Don't exercise your rights or your privileges. That is the meaning of being made broken bread and poured out wine in reality. You know, in a society that likes to maintain its quote-unquote privileges and rights that treats everything about itself as freedoms when in reality we're either in servitude to God or we're servitude to Satan because literally we're born in a foreign kingdom that's not ours and if we become born again we're reborn into a spiritual kingdom that God has prepared for us. In between times we live in lands and places and governments and powers and principalities and things that appear on the surface to have seemingly good ideas but when you scratch the surface a little deeper then you see that there is at work a warfare that is between two opposite forces one being that god wants you to discover and realize who he is as being creator of the universe and that he is dynamically involved in your salvation to cause you to come to a place of loving the world and choosing to save souls from the devastation that's to come by way of his son Jesus and the salvation that he provided by dying on the cross. And the opposite is the attraction of the world which is trying to distract everyone from the point of hearing God speak and knowing that there is a personal relationship to a creator who wants to have a dynamic and interpersonal communication with the people that he's created. All of life exists in a very obvious plane, that which we can see, that which we can hear, and that which we can understand with our mind. God has revealed himself in this spiritual or in this physical plane. He has done through, so through his word, he has done so through his son, and he has done so throughout creation. C.S. Lewis is famous for having a book that was called Mere Christianity, whereby it proves the existence of God simply by the things that you can see around you and that you can understand with your mind. And sadly, there are so many that 
don't see, don't connect the dots, don't put together the reality of knowing God in a personal way. When you do, then you know that the most important thing of this life isn't what you get from it, but it's what you give to God. What you give to God is yourself in order that He might save souls from hell. There is a literal physical reality of a lake of fire with which everything that has been corrupted will be put into. It will be separated from the holiness of God, from God Himself, and placed into that area that God has created originally for only angels who rebelled against Him, from those that were created by Him that refused to be in subjection to Him. So, we were never intended to go there, but should a person refuse to discover and realize who God is and what He's done and how He's provided a relationship for you, then there will be those that go there, sadly, eternally separated from God and from creation. The amazing thing is, is that God wants us to participate with Him to save many souls and to choose to care so much about them that we would be willing to lay down our life the same way that Jesus did. The question in utmost verse highest is, are you willing to lay down your life? Are you willing to give up your rights? Do you owe the sinner the salvation that you so freely have been given? Oswald Chambers thinks so. It's up for you and Jesus to decide that one.